All right, so let's get into the review of this past weekend's games. Where would you like to start? Uh, you know what? We start with them every week. Let's just stick with it. Let's start with Tennessee finally showing some vulnerability. They say they can hit nukes even with wood bats, and then they play with wood bats, and the offense doesn't show up. They lose 2-3 to three to Tennessee Tech in the midweek. And they follow it up with another subpar performance on Friday night against Alabama. Tony Vitello gets ejected. First inning of the Saturday game. They bounce back and win those two games. So salvage the week with a 2-2 two and two record. But for once this season, Tennessee shows some vulnerability. Yeah, they finally looked shaky at least a little bit. Um, but the, the way they kind of bounce back from the Alabama series winning the last two games by a combined score of 24 to 6 still shows that they have that firepower and the passion to to win these games even with their coach being ejected and eventually suspended for four games yeah vitello getting ejected there seemed like the tennessee squad wasn't too happy with alabama's antics and uh cheering when the pitcher got hurt but you have to say tennessee's one of the most uh, I guess you say outgoing and they love they love to showboat as well so if you can't dish it if you can't take it then you probably shouldn't dish it we'll see how they handle it the rest of the year but it looks like Vitello getting ejected for him kind of sparked the team yeah going back to the the injury to their star pitcher Chase Dolander he was injured from a comeback line drive hit um, and it doesn't sound like the best news luckily they've had Blade Tidwell in reserve uh, just, you know, a preseason All-American that you can slot into that uh, open spot for the starting uh, weekend rotation. So he was supposed to be their ace going into the year. And if he wasn't injured, he would have definitely been that person. So having that option just available for you is ridiculous. And I don't see really them regressing from that standpoint. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the most surprising things about their start was that they were without their ace heading into the season. Still only had one loss without him. And so it's going to be nice having him back. They have him back now. And they're probably going to need him heading on the road to Florida. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let's jump down, I guess, one spot in the rankings from the previous week to Miami at Virginia Tech. Kind of a surprise week for, for Miami. They just couldn't really get it going to the, to the competition level that Virginia Tech showed. And they look to be very hot. And this starts a downward trend for most of the other top 10 teams from the past week that, that we saw consistently. Yeah, definitely a, a bit of, of a surprise for Miami. But if you guys remember last week on the Bash Bros podcast, I may have said that this was a week where you could catch Miami lacking. And indeed, they were Virginia Tech's offense teed off on the Miami pitching, which had been solid up to this point. Virginia Tech scored 12 runs in the Friday game and then 13 in the Saturday game. Just absolutely destroyed that pitching staff. And then Virginia Tech struggled in the, the Sunday game, which seems to be their story as of late. But if they're if they're scoring like that on Friday and Saturday games, they're a tough team to beat. And it was an impressive series win for that squad. For sure. Virginia Tech's offense just looked absolutely deadly and Miami couldn't keep up for the most part. And besides their first conference series against Georgia Tech where uh, Vautech got swept uh, they looked they have looked very very good and have won the rest of their series so they're looking like a team that could compete for national championship if given the opportunity and their offense keeps being as good as it has been yeah definitely a team to uh, keep an eye on for the ACC title as we head down the the back stretch of the season yeah all right, let's go down a few more spots to another supposed great series of the weekend, and that was number five Texas Tech against TCU, who we probably had at like number 26, obviously not making the top 25, but the pro probable first team out that we saw, and they showed us because they bounced back and absolutely demolished Tech, sweeping them, and looking back at their first, or I guess their, their most recent three series TCU faced West Virginia Texas and Texas Tech and ended up going five and four which I think most teams in the nation would take with how well those other teams have been playing and, and their record shows that 
Yeah, I mean, like you said, just a tough showing for Texas Tech. And TCU, we had heavily discussed them in the rankings the previous week, but they were probably in that 26 spot, like you mentioned, and they came up big. And now for Texas Tech, the question marks are really coming out. They lost two midweek games last week to Grand Canyon, and then they lose the midweek to Oklahoma this week and follow it up by getting swept by TCU. Just not not the situation you want to be in for the Red Raiders. They were looking like a team that was a, a heavy favorite to make it to Omaha, and now they're slipping, so they're going to want to regain before things fall off the fall off the cliff there. Yeah, they're going to want to put on the burners, and unfortunately for Texas Christian University, it doesn't end there for their series, their like tough stretch, because Oklahoma State is just around the corner for them this next weekend, and then... They'll have a little bit of a break with some easier opponents, but but still, they're, they've been a part of just an absolutely brutal stretch. And for them to get, come out of that, hopefully around 500, if, if they don't get swept by Oklahoma State, that's pretty substantial and could have a lot of value going down the wire. Yeah, we're definitely looking forward to that Oklahoma State TCU series, and we'll be, we'll be touching on it a little more later in the podcast. For sure. Next up is what we predicted to be the best series of the weekend, or at least on paper with number 13 LSU at number 8 Arkansas. And for the second straight week, our prediction was completely wrong because it was another sweep <laughs> for the second straight week. LSU, or I guess the, the one of the teams gets swept. Luckily this time, we kind of thought a sweep could happen either way. Uh, we weren't that surprised, and in this case, it went for Arkansas. Yeah, we had said before it wouldn't be surprising to see a sweep either in either direction of this series, and Arkansas pulled it out. Arkansas had been ranked in the the top three most of the year before losing the series to Florida, and so this was a huge rebound series for them. And, I mean, we've been waiting for the offense for Arkansas to start uh, clicking, and that's why they hadn't been climbing maybe up into that two spot or one spot. But when the pitching staff performs like they did this past weekend, the offense doesn't need to be clicking. They held LSU to six runs total on the entire weekend. And LSU has one of the most powerful offenses in the entire country. To, so to hold that squad to six runs in an entire weekend is pretty incredible. And if the Arkansas pitching staff can continue to do that, they're going to be a scary team. Yeah, it seemed like Arkansas's bats also... Uh, we're able to heat up a bit this past weekend, but now it really looks like the top two SEC teams have completely separated themselves from the rest of the pack. And then after that, it's just a complete mess to figure out like where teams stand in relation to one another. But Arkansas and Tennessee seem to be the favorites of the conference at this point. Yep, you got Arkansas and Tennessee pretty much locked up to win their respective divisions. And then past that, you got like eight teams sitting around 500 or so in conference play. Like you said, it's an absolute mess, and it's hard to tell who's in that in that upper edge of the group and who's at the bottom edge at this point. Yeah, let's jump down to the next teams where we have number nine, Virginia, at Pitt. And it is now back-to-back -back weeks that Virginia has lost their weekend series and have now lost six of their past seven games. So not the best run for Virginia. They're also a team that really kind of has to turn it around to, to get something done. Yeah, not a good stretch for those guys. They, they dropped the midweek as well. I believe it was the Old Dominion and then lose the Friday game four to nine. Absolutely crushed Pitt in the Saturday game, 18 to zero and then lose the Sunday game 1-4 to four again. Uh, yeah, the offense just doesn't seem to be clicking right now. Uh, prior to the Miami series, this was arguably the most potent offense in the country next to Tennessee, and then Geloff went hitless against Miami. This weekend was not the same story. He was 7-12, for 12, absolutely popped off, but the rest of the squad did nothing to help him. So we're going to need the offense to get clicking again. And the big concerns for Virginia heading into the year was the pitching staff. And those flaws are starting to show right now. Yeah, eight of their nine losses for Virginia come in conference. So it's hard to know at this point if they are the real deal. 
So, I mean, and looking at the other side, Pitt has now won their last four conference series and sits above 500. So Pitt's definitely climbing up. They could be ranked if they have a few good good weekend series. Um, but really, Pitt's next hardest t- test is this week against Miami. So we'll have to see if they make it past that. But Virginia is, is struggling a bit, and they really have to figure things out and see if they're actually uh, like a high-caliber team or not. Yeah, Pitt sitting in that probably 25 to 35 range for us. Need another quality weekend out of them to jump into the rankings. And then on the other hand for Virginia, just need to find a way to get clicking again. You don't want to keep slipping down this the way they're going right now. Yeah, and we can go to another ACC series with number six Notre Dame at Duke, where surprising to probably most people, Duke comes out and sweeps Notre Dame, and this could really be a turning point for them. They were projected to be one of the best ACC teams in the in the conference and have wildly underperformed, and Notre Dame kind of was the opposite of that. But now, where they look to be one of the hottest teams in the country, they are struggling, and they kind of show inconsistencies where the series wins that they get, they've looked good, but they've been swept multiple times now, so it's kind of a a cause for concern yeah I mean Notre Dame got swept by Louisville early in the ACC play and after that they started playing really well we thought they had moved past that and that that could have been potentially chalked up as just a fluke weekend but then they get swept by Duke here and I mean talent has never been the question for Duke that like you said they were projected to be one of the best teams in the ACC but I mean, they were sitting at 16 and 20 overall, I believe. So I believe everyone in the country was pretty much chalking them up as a bad team at this point. And then all of a sudden they sweep a top 10 team. It doesn't make sense, but it seems to be the story of college baseball this year. Yeah, definitely. The ACC is really just beating themselves up, just similar to what's happening in the SEC. And Miami seems to be the only team that is able to extend and get out away from the the rest of the pack as the only team significantly above 500 in conference. Yep, definitely a sticky situation in that conference. Not a lot of separation, like you said. So we'll see how things go down the stretch. Yeah, it's going to be tough to separate. And the the teams that get left out for for, uh, postseason are going to be pretty annoyed with themselves because there's definitely a lot of opportunity and the conference seems to be very good in overall. So getting left out to a sweep that happened to Duke or something like that is is something that you really have to look at, out for. Certainly. Yeah, a lot of things in their control, but if you don't take care of biz- business at the end of the day, you're not doing yourself any favors. Yeah, we can, we can also stay in conference with the last big ACC series being number 12 Louisville at Florida State. Another sweep, again, by the team that wasn't ranked. Florida State sweeps them. And really the only close game was the finale. Florida State's been pretty up and down this season, so it should be interesting if they can find their groove against a Clemson team this weekend who has just had their first conference series win. Uh, It was a good win. It was against Wake Forest, who was ranked in some polls. But Clemson, another team just like Duke that was projected to be one of the better teams in the conference and hasn't been performing, so... We'll see what happens with Florida State if they can if they can deal with them. Yeah, I mean, story coming into the year for Florida State is that they're supposed to have one of the best pitching staffs in the country. But the first half of the year, the pitching did decent, but there was zero signs of life from that offense. And I think that was the story for me this weekend. They score eight runs on Friday, nine on Saturday, ten on Sunday. I mean, incredible performance from the offense. And the pitching did well in the first two games, so if their offense can actually do something this back half of the season, certainly a team to look out for. Yeah, they could definitely be dangerous. Their pitching staff alone can keep them in games for the most part, so if the offense gets hot, then they'll be dangerous. All right, now we can, I guess, stay on the East Coast for another Florida series with number 17 Florida at number 24 Vandy. Vandy almost pulled off the comeback win in the final game of the series for the sweep, but Florida was just barely able to to eke out the win in extras to avoid that. 
And we need to now kind of keep a track on Hunter Barco to see how he's doing. He was looked like he was injured or something was going on. He was taken out of game one after only pitching two innings. So definitely something to keep your eye on because he was their ace pitcher. And, and that's something that you definitely don't want to miss out if you're fighting for, for a postseason spot. Yeah, Hunter Barco, certainly one of the top pitchers in the country. And yeah, a rough weekend for Florida. Uh, the Vandy squad, although talented, hadn't proved themselves up to this point. So I think Florida would have liked to take this series looking back on it. Florida still has some quality wins under their belt, but this would have been a nice one to have on the road. And they don't have a whole lot of opportunities left to prove themselves this year, so they're going to need to step it up. Yeah, Vanderbilt finally proved themselves and got their first good series win, like you said. And this kind of keeps them in the mix for a hosting spot if they can continue uh, that success down the line. But they really needed this this win this past weekend, and they were they were able to get it and almost got the sweep, which would have been even better. But unfortunately for them, Florida was just able to rebound and, and get that last game. Yeah, I mean, like you said, Vandy's talent was never in question. I think people would have locked them in as a guaranteed host coming into the year. But when you don't get quality wins, you fall out of the rankings, and so a series win like this was needed for that team and it'll most likely get them rolling. Definitely, and for the last series highlight of the previous weekend, we can go to number 23 Stanford at number 10 UCLA. Uh, Stanford was a team that was finally looking like it was clicking offensively, and they continued that throughout the weekend and showed their true colors and the team that people really expected them to be at the beginning of the year with the offense finding their way and Brock Jones finally able to get out of those strikeout problems for most part. I mean, game two, he, he once again uh, went back to his old ways, but the third game, he almost had three, three home runs, ended up with two and a double. So just that alone, it looks like he's starting to get his groove with his swing back. Yeah, I mean, Stanford... They got Alex Williams and Quinn Matthews holding it down on the pitching staff. Both those guys have been very consistent for them. And then, like you said, Brock Jones, I think he was on vacation for the first half of the season, just was not showing up whatsoever. But this weekend, he goes 5 for 11. Like you said, two bombs in the last game, almost had three. And now Stanford sits at 11-7 and seven in the Pac-12, and they've played all the top teams in the conference, so... It's looking good for them, and they should have a chance to vie for the Pac-12 regular season championship. UCLA, on the other hand, was looking hot. Uh, was pretty much in everybody's eight for Omaha's, looking like a top 10 team. And now they slip up here. Not that it's a bad loss, but I think people expected a little more from that UCLA pitching staff. Yeah, for sure. And and with that pitching staff, it does seem like there is a bit of a gap now on, on Sunday with both of... Both past, past two weekends of them getting a loss with Thatcher Hurd's absence uh, because of his injury. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out for and see if they can figure out how to get a win on Sundays because that is a problem down the line if they can't. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the pitching's definitely an issue. But also you have to look at the offense too. In their two losses, they scored a combined one runs. I mean, that's just not going to cut it whatsoever you can't win games if you're only scoring one run right they're so. very they're very pitcher reliant and if the pitchers aren't there or if if the other team's pitchers are just a tad bit better uh they don't they don't have to do much because that ucla offense hasn't been electric so far this season definitely really appreciate everybody watching this video if you enjoyed it please uh like and subscribe 